everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these Tunisian crochet kitchen towels. So this is currently a free pattern on my blog and you can find a link for that in the description box below. So some of the things that you're going to need to make this pattern is you're going to need one ball of Hobby Lobby's Yarn B. It's a cotton linen blend and I used parchment and I also used hummus for the color. It's a number four worsted weight yarn and you're only going to need one ball, so 180 yards total. But you can find all the pattern directions on the blog. Okay, and you're also going to need a Tunisian crochet hook and this is a 6.5 millimeter hook. And you're also going to need an extension cord to go with it. Or you can also just buy um, one of the regular Tunisian crochet hooks. Okay, that should work for this pattern. All right, so this is a very uh, simple pattern, I would say. It'd be great for an adventurous beginner um, because you're only going to need to know two stitches. So the first stitch that you need to know is the Tunisian honeycomb stitch, okay? And that's this stitch pattern right here. And we're only gonna be making a few rows of that. And then you're gonna need to know the Tunisian simple stitch, which is this stitch right here. So after we've worked a number of rows of the Tunisian simple stitch, then we're right back at it with our Tunisian honeycomb stitch. And then finally, you just wanna make a loop. Okay, so you can hang these cute little kitchen towels up in your kitchen. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do this step by step. So if you've never done Tunisian crochet before, I encourage you to try this pattern. It's very simple, it works up fast, and you get a cute little kitchen towel at the end. All right, so I'm gonna get straight into the pattern. Okay, so our first step in crocheting a Tunisian kitchen towel is to chain 46. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our slip knot. You wanna create your slip knot by just um, taking the strand and wrapping it around your finger twice. Then you wanna pull this strand over and then pull this strand over your finger, just like that, okay? And then just pull and that should create a knot, okay. So you wanna grab your hook, and my extension cord is gonna make a bit of noise just because it's moving around here on the table, but um, we're gonna chain 46, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, oopsies, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. Okay. So once you have 46 chains, you want to flip your chain over. So we're working on the back side of the chain. Okay. So just flip it over very carefully. And we're going to skip our first chain and we're going to work in the back bumps of our chain. So these little bumps right here, that's where you're gonna put your hook under, okay? So here's one, here's the next one, here's the other one, and then so on, okay? So remember, skip the first one, and we're gonna work uh, into the second one, okay? So I find that the second one is always the hardest for me, so I do use my fingers to help me with this part, but you wanna take your hook, put it underneath that bump, okay? So it looks like this, and then yarn over and then pull through. Okay, so you should have two loops on your hook. All right, so let's find our third one. Here's that back bump. Pull the hook underneath, yarn over and pull through. Okay, all right, let's do our next one. Find that back bump, put your hook underneath, yarn over and pull through. Okay, so you should have four loops at your hook at this point. All right, and so just continue to do that until the end of the chain. Okay, and so this is actually called our forward pass. All right, so 
here we go. Just continue to work underneath those back bumps. All right, so I'm here at my last one. Okay, I just completed it. So you should have something that looks like this now, okay? Your forward pass should look like this. All right. So you're gonna have a series of um, loops on your hook. All right, okay. So now we're gonna work our return pass. So you first want to yarn over, okay? And pull through the first loop, okay? This is also called your last Tunisian stitch, okay? Or LTS for short form. All right, and so now for every other loop on the hook until the end, you wanna yarn over and pull through two, okay? So this is the return pass. So yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through. All right, you might have to move up your loops a little bit. Yarn over and pull through two. All right, and it should start looking like this. Okay, so just continue to do this. All right, so now it, you should have something that looks like this, okay? All right, so your return pass should look like this. Okay, so now that we've done this part, now is when we can actually start our honeycomb stitch part, okay? Because this is just a standard method for starting Tunisian crochet. So make sure you have plenty of yarn ready for this part. Okay, I'm just going to take my yarn. Okay. All right, so for the honeycomb stitch, we are gonna be working a Tunisian simple stitch and a Tunisian pearl stitch, okay? And you're gonna alternate between the two. So you always want to skip the first stitch, okay? And this is where, right here is where we're gonna make our simple stitch and then pearl stitch. Simple pearl, simple pearl, okay, and so forth. All right, so for simple stitch, you're gonna work your hook underneath the first vertical bar okay so just under this first loop all right so I'm just going to show you so you're going to just stick your hook under and then over see just like that so just under that vertical bar okay and then you're going to yarn over and pull through and that's it that's how you make a Tunisian simple stitch it's very very simple all right so now we're going to make a Tunisian pearl stitch, okay? So this one's a bit more trickier, but once you get a hang of it, it, it's really easy. Okay, so instead of having the yarn in the back, you're going to push the yarn forward. Okay, so pull that yarn forward, just like that. All right, and then just like the simple stitch, work your hook underneath that first vertical bar, so it's like that. And then take this yarn and then move it back forward. Okay, so it looks like this now. Then you want to wrap it around your hook and pull through that loop. Okay, so you have your simple and pearl. All right, so now we're going to work a simple again. So for the simple, and I always have to adjust my hands when I do this part, but for a simple, go ahead and put your hook underneath the first vertical bar, yarn over, and pull through. Okay. And so now we're going to work our pearl again. So take your yarn, pull it forward so it looks like this. Take your hook, put it underneath the first vertical bar, 
take this yarn again and then push it to the back. Okay, so it looks like this and then pull through. Okay, and so how you can identify these stitches is just like this. The, you have the simple stitch and then the purl stitch. The simple stitch is always gonna be a bit longer, okay? And then the purl is always gonna be a bit sideways. And so it'll look like this, all right? So now that we just worked our purl, we're gonna work a simple again. So take your hook and put it underneath, okay? The first vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. All right, now we're working our purl again. Yarn forward, take your hook, put it underneath the first vertical bar, wrap your yarn back, okay, so it looks like this, and then pull through. All right, so here we go. Simple, underneath hook, and yarn over and pull through, purl, yarn forward, underneath vertical bar, yarn back, and then pull through. All right, so you just want to continue to do this method until the end of the row, okay? Until this last stitch, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and then I will meet you towards the end. Okay, so I'm just about here at my end, and all right, so you should have um, your row should start to look something like this, okay? All right, so I'm here at my end. I just got to make one more purl stitch. So yarn forward our hook underneath back and then pull through all right so this is when we have to make our last Tunisian stitch okay and you will do this for every single row all right so you want to and the first one is always a bit tricky but you're going to stick your hook right here in this little tiny hole okay so let me see if I can show that a little better but it's going to be right here so it's going to be underneath these two loops okay so just like that all right there we go all right okay so it should look like this now okay so now we're going to work our return pass so you want to yarn over and pull through the first loop Okay, just like we did before, and then yarn over, pull through two loops. All right, and just continue to do this. All right. towards me and now and you should have something that looks like this okay all right so now for our second row we are going to work our purl stitch first and then our simple stitch okay so we're gonna skip right here all right and we're gonna work into this one all right so our purl stitch we just push our yarn forward just like that we're gonna take our hook and go underneath the vertical bar Okay, and then push our yarn back. All right, so you should have something that looks like this and then pull through. All right, and so now we do our simple stitch. So our simple stitch is a bit hidden, okay? But it's right here. All right, so take your yarn and push it under. All right, under the first vertical bar, yarn over and pull through. Okay, so here's our yarn. Now we're gonna do purl again. All right, so push your yarn forward underneath the vertical bar, move your yarn back. And then um, if you find it easier, you can always stick your finger right here, your thumb. Okay, and then pull through. All right, so now we're gonna do simple again. So put your hook underneath the vertical bar, yarn over and pull through. All right, now we're doing purl, move the yarn forward hook underneath vertical bar, push the yarn back, place your thumb right there if it helps. Okay, and then pull through. All right, and now we do our regular simple, yarn over, pull through, 
our purl forward yarn underneath vertical bar yarn back thumb on the loop and pull through okay and you should have something that looks like this now you should start to see little tiny honeycombs all right so continue to work this pattern alternating between the two stitches until the end of the row okay so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i will meet you at the end okay so i'm almost here towards the end of my row okay and so you should have something that looks like this now okay you're going to see some very defined little honeycombs everywhere all right so now we just have to finish it off okay so i need to make one more simple stitch all right, so I'm gonna put my hook under there, yarn over and pull through. All right, and now we have to make our um, last Tunisian stitch. So it's gonna be under these two loops. Okay, so let me see if I can show you guys a little better here. All right, but it's gonna be right here. So this is the loop you wanna go. Okay, so that spot. Always make sure that you're going underneath two, two strands of yarn. And then yarn over and pull through. All right, okay, so now we just follow the same method for our return pass. Yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, okay? And just continue to do this until the end of the row. All right, okay, so I just finished my last chain on, or my last loop of my hook, okay? All right, so now we're gonna start our last row for the Tunisian honeycomb stitch. So since our last row started off with a purl stitch and then a simple stitch, now we're gonna start off with a simple stitch and then a purl stitch, okay? So let me get some yarn here. all right so here we go we're going to make one simple stitch and it's going to be right here it's going to be this vertical bar that you want to go under okay so let's insert our hook yarn over and pull through all right so now we do our purl stitch so push our yarn forward go underneath the vertical bar push the yarn back put your thumb here if, it, if it's helpful all right and then pull through okay so simple stitch underneath hook, pull through, or yarn over, pull through, move the yarn forward, go underneath the vertical bar, move the yarn back, okay, and then pull through. All right, so just continue to do that until the end of the row and I will meet you towards the end. Okay, so I'm here towards my end and I just have to make one more purl stitch. So let me just yarn over my hook under a vertical bar, move yarn back, thumb over, and then pull through. All right, and so now we have to make our last Tunisian stitch, okay? So let's put our hook right between these two strands. All right, so make sure you always have those two loops that you're going through two loops. Yarn over and pull through. Okay, all right, so now your kitchen towel should start to look like this okay so now we're going to make our standard return pass so yarn over pull through that first loop and then continue pulling through okay so yarn over pull through those two loops each time all right and continue to do this till the end Okay, so we just finished our honeycomb stitch pattern part of our kitchen towel. All right, so I'm just gonna grab the other one as an example. So you know which part we're gonna work on next, but we are going to work on our Tunisian simple stitch, okay? So we're gonna start right here. All right, so this is going to be row five. Okay, and so we've been doing the Tunisian simple stitch for the honeycomb stitch, so this part should be quite easy, I think. All right, here we go. 
All right, so starting off where we left off, okay, so now we're in row five. We are going to work our Tunisian simple stitch in this second bar right here, okay? All right, because you always want to skip the first vertical bar. So take your hook, put it underneath the vertical bar, just like so, yarn over and pull through, okay? All right, and then find that third vertical bar, yarn over, pull it through, and then just keep on going till the end of the row. All right, just keep working that simple stitch. Okay, so I just finished my last stitch of my Tunisian simple stitch row. Okay, you should have something that looks like this now. And so now we're going to work our return pass. All right, so yarn over, pull through that first loop, and then continue pulling through two. Okay. All right, so I just finished my Tunisian simple stitch row, so row five, okay, and um, you'll start to see it right here, okay, because this was our honeycomb stitch pattern, and then this is our Tunisian simple stitch pattern, okay? So now you just want to, so for row six through row 39, you want to do the simple stitch, okay? So you're going to do exactly what we just did. You're going to skip the first vertical bar and work in that second ver vertical bar and then till the end of the row okay so you want to continue to do this until row 39 so I'm going to go ahead and make um, the simple stitch till row 39 and then I will meet you back here okay so I just finished with my last row of my Tunisian simple stitch okay so your dish towel should look something like this now and so now we are going to just work a couple of rows of the honeycomb stitch. So this is what we did in the beginning of our dish towel. Okay, so to work the honeycomb stitch, we are going to start off with a simple stitch again, and then we're going to go into a pearl stitch. Okay, so we're going to skip the first vertical bar, and we are going to work a Tunisian simple stitch. So go ahead and insert your hook under that first vertical bar, yarn over and pull through. Okay, now we're going to do our purl stitch. So you move your yarn forward, you put your hook underneath the vertical bar again, move your yarn back, and then pull through, and then we make a simple stitch again. Okay, and so you're just alternating. So purl stitch, move yarn forward, underneath the vertical bar, move yarn back, place your thumb here if it helps, and then pull through. All right, so you wanna to continue to do this until the end of the row. So I'm gonna go ahead and work the first stitch of the honeycomb stitch until the end of the row, and then I will meet you back here. Okay, so I just finished my row of my Tunisian honeycomb stitch, and you should have something that looks like this. And so now we're just gonna work on our return pass. Okay, so for the return pass, remember you just wanna yarn over and pull through the first loop, okay, and then you're going to pull through two loops. All right, so let's do that until the end of the row. Okay, so I just finished all my honeycomb stitch rows. All right, and you should have something that looks like this now. So now all we have to do is just bind off, okay? And so we have to make a Tunisian slip stitch, a slip stitch bind off. All right, so here we go. All right, so to do a bind off, it's actually very simple. We're just gonna make slip stitches. Okay, so what you wanna do is, and let me actually zoom in just a bit here, okay. So 
for a slip stitch bind off, you want to insert your hook into the vertical bar. Okay, you're gonna yarn over and you're just gonna pull through that first vertical bar and then pull through the loop on your hook. Okay, so that one remains. All right, so that's how you work a bind off. Okay, so insert your hook into the next vertical bar. Okay, yarn over, pull through that first loop and then pull through the second loop. All right, so that's how you work a slip stitch bind off. So you wanna to continue to do that until the end of the row, okay? But I'm gonna be doing it with you. All right, so insert your hook, yarn over, and then pull through, and then pull through one more time, okay? All right, so just continue to do that. Okay, so now that we're here at the end, we have this part left right here, and I just like to work it in one more time, okay? Just like the, just like we've been doing. All right, so just make that last Tunisian simple stitch and then pull through. Okay, that's it. All right, so now we are basically done with our Tunisian crochet kitchen towel. So all we need to do is create a loop. Okay, so to create a loop, you want to chain 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so once you've chained 10, we are just going to slip stitch it to the left hand side and we're going to slip stitch it three times on the side here. Okay, so here we go. So this part is just like regular crochet. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna insert our hook into this first uh, stitch or side stitch over here. Okay, and then we're just gonna yarn over and pull through and then pull through one more time. Okay, and then slip stitch another time. Okay, and then once more. All right, okay, so it should look like this. Okay, once that part is done, you can go ahead and cut your yarn and you wanna leave about, I would say, three inches. Okay, you wanna cut your yarn and then yarn over one more time and pull through to close the knot. There we go. All right, okay, so now all that's left to do is just work in your ends. Okay, so once you've finished weaving in all your ends, then you're completely done. And so now you have a really cute little dish towel to hang up in your kitchen. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful if you've been wanting to try Tunisian crochet and just didn't know where to start or what project to make. I think this is a perfect little uh, beginner project as, as it's not too complicated once you get a handle on how to make the stitches. And so yeah, I hope you really enjoyed watching this. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye.